Okay, I've got a question. What do various shades of beige paint, a cat named Ambrose, and the relationship habits of mountain lions have in common? Well, somehow, believe it or not, they are all key plot points in 2014's The Nine Lives of Christmas. We've got a lot to talk about, Josh. We do, Jennifer, and we'll unwrap it all on this episode of Do You Watch What I Watch? I suppose that it's fitting that this recap and review of The Nine Lives of Christmas We just happen to be number nine in our 12 Pods of Christmas Summer Series, Jennifer. Look at us. It's like we did that on purpose, but it was kismet, some may say. We didn't plan it, but the fates aligned, so let's jump right in. Here's the plot summary of this fan-favorite movie. After a stray cat adopts Zachary, yes, you heard that right, he meets Merrily and realizes the single life is not as fulfilling as he thought it was. Let's get to it. All right, so curtain up here, and we get a generic Christmas tune, like really generic Christmas tune here, (laughs) interspersed with cuts of a fire station in our male lead. Brandon Ruth as Zachary is posing for a PG-13 beefcake firefighter charity calendar while getting a mega hard time from his fellow firefighters until, whoa we get a bit of a beam up here, the fire bell goes off, and it's action, action, action. They are off to a call. And it's important to note, this whole time, an adorable little cat has been creeping around the fire station the whole time, peering into the window, I thought was the best the best take that we got early of this kitty cat. <laughs> little preview. Yeah, we don't often get a thirst trap opening sequence in a Hallmark Christmas movie. But in 2014, we sure did. I would like to say this is the only Hallmark movie that has a firefighter calendar, but I'm pretty sure Kristen Chenoweth was in another one. Maybe that was Lifetime. Anywho, carry on. We digress. Now we're in a veterinary class, and our female lead, Kimberly Sustad, is Mary Lee, is dozing off, but she still manages to ace her professor's big question. Now her friend Sarah tells her, girl, You need a break. And she's about to pull out of the parking lot, and she's almost smashed by the fire truck that happens to be zooming by. Zachary waves ever so kindly from the truck, and she happens to see him. And I've got to wonder, Jennifer, does this qualify as a meat cute, or is it sort of like a half meat cute? I mean, if that's a meat cute, then I've met a whole lot of people in my life. I don't think that's a meat cute. That was just foreshadowing, I think. Agreed. Agreed. By the way, we learned that Marilee works at a pet supply store in this no-name town and clearly is overqualified for that gig. She's super smart. We get that from Go. Meantime, Zachary gets home and he spots a sweet cat who just happens to follow him inside of his house. Now, he's been renovating this fixer-upper of a house and that's sort of an emerging plot throughout this entire thing. Now, the cat's name he sees on the collar is Ambrose and Zachary feels the need to strike up a conversation with this cat. He tells the cat he works 24-hour shifts. He isn't into commitment, but Ambrose isn't having it. Zachary says, one night, that's it. And clearly we know where this is going. Now, Jennifer, have you ever had a cat? No, I'm actually highly allergic to cats. (laughs) So nearly watching this movie... I'm struggling with allergies right now, and I'm not saying it's because of Ambrose, but I'm not ruling it out. (laughs) No. (laughs) Not had a cat. I've had plenty of Beanie Baby cats back in the day that I one day will retire on with that collection. I get that. Yeah, we have two cats. You? Yeah. Teddy and Blanche. Both of them were shelter cats, so this really struck at my heart because shelter pets is sort of an emerging theme throughout this entire thing. So, love cats. All right, back to the recap here. Marilee, she gets back from Walmart to her apartment. We know that she's back from Walmart because she's carrying reusable bags that read Walmart. (laughs) So clearly we've got some hashtag product placement happening here. I miss that. (laughs) I was like, when you said that, I was like, how did you know it was Walmart? Okay, got it. Missed that. (laughs) Pretty noticeable. Yeah. Anywho, she gets a stern talking to from her not-so-nice landlord because she's got a stowaway cat. Somebody has heard it, and that's apparently a no-no for her rental. At the fire hall, meantime, Zachary learned that Ambrose's guardian passed away recently, and we learn he is unlucky in love, but has the full support of his co-workers. So we're getting a little bit of plot development through and through. 
What did you think of these leads in the first few minutes of this movie, Jennifer? Well, we are a long time Kimberly Sustead stands on this podcast, and this is one of her first leading roles, if not the first. So I'm here for her. Now, I don't think he's been in any other Hallmark movies besides this. And then the spoiler alert, there is a sequel, The Nine Kittens of Christmas. Um, but I, I thought they were pretty charming and relatable. I like them. I like that they're not completely perfect, you know? Agreed. Agreed. Marilee is now at a different store, not Walmart, so she goes to a different grocery store, apparently, buying ice cream, and she runs into Zachary, who is buying cat food, because, of course, now he has to take care of Ambrose. She's cutely awkward, because she knows her stuff about veterinary medicine, and she recommends water, not milk, and I've got to wonder if we've ever heard before the phrase horrible diarrhea in a Hallmark movie, but alas, here we are. (laughs) <laughs> Never in a meat cute for sure. Never, Never in a meat. Because <laughs> I would call this the official meat cute. Yeah, I love the banter in this whole scene. I mean, just her comedic timing is great in this scene, anyways. And I posted a still image on our socials just before she runs into him. She's trying to figure out what ice cream to get. She gets like a little pint, and then she swaps it up for another. Pint. And she gets like the party, <laughs> like that of ice cream, and just sticks it in her little cart and toodles away, like do do do, and. He makes a joke like, are you having a party <laughs> of ice cream for a party? She's like, no, but it'll take a long time for me to eat it. Like, it's just, it's so awkward and so cringe, but so funny. I love this whole scene and Same interaction. Here. Same here. It is very clear, however, that Zachary is literally the cat's meow in this town by the sheer number of women that we see literally a wooga when they see him passing. Marilee, meantime, is kicking herself for mentioning the causes of cat diarrhea, the milk that we heard about earlier, in her first run-in with him since she is kind of a smitten kitten about him from go. Oh, Zachary, a kitten. Meow, meow, meow. Zachary contemplates paint colors with Ambrose, and some gal named Blair swings by in a Gucci dress. We know it's Gucci because she says it's Gucci. Apparently she's a model, and I don't like her. Especially since she's A, not someone who likes cat, and B, she can't tell the difference between eggshell and a crew. Now, Jennifer, not saying you would have any intimate knowledge of such things, but I mean, that's got to be a strike for someone who might have, I don't know, an acumen around these such things, right? Who might carry a paint fan with her at all times more than her wallet and, you know, keys. Yes. There are eight billion shades of white. And yes, believe it or not, they are all slightly different. (laughs) So (laughs) you have to respect the paint colors. Picking out a neutral paint color, not that I would know, is probably the hardest part of some people's jobs. There you have it. Well, it's clear that I don't like Blair from Go. And it's also clear that Ambrose doesn't like Blair from Go because... He literally, if it's possible, gives a cat stink eye to Blair, which makes me love Ambrose even more. It turns out Zachary and Blair wind up at the same fancy schmancy restaurant as Marilee that night, who is there with her sister Jacqueline and Jacqueline's husband. Now, she spots Zachary all the way across the restaurant, and she tells her sister that she happens to be seeing Zachary, although she doesn't call him Zachary, she calls him Brown Eyes to avoid Jacqueline's attempt at setting her up on a date. He, meantime, is having a boring, terrible night and trying to escape Blair, so he wanders off, toodles off to the terrace there at the restaurant where he finally connects with Marilee, and they have a cute conversation about relationships and mountain lions. Okay, there you have it. Who knew? (laughs) Blair tried to convince Zachary to ditch Ambrose because Blair, of course, doesn't like cats. Marilee's friend tries to get her to sign up on some website meantime called Just Desserts for a date <laughs> <Had> to, <laugh. laughs> to the mayor's Christmas ball. Now, the backstory here, her sister wrangled her into a double date, and she needs to produce a guy with brown eyes, of course, since that's what she said she calls him. So there's a bit of a quandary here for our girl, Marilee. She limited herself, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Now, it turns out Blair's dad is the guy who owns the store where Marilee works. Now, she's trying to offload Ambrose at the store and is not nice, not nice to anyone at the store. Clearly, that's her reputation. They call her the Blair Witch Project, which I thought was 
a 2014 reference if I've ever heard it, and funny at the same time. He was dated then, though, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, Blair Witch absolutely. came out. I feel like I was in high school, and my dad would not allow me to go see Blair Witch. <laughs> and then in the past few years, I brought it up. He's like, well, you can go see it now if you want to. I was like, I don't want to see it now. <laughs> I wanted to see it when it was cool to see it. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have slept for a week. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But yeah, so that was a very fun um, pun to her, to a uh, name to call her, yeah. I thought so. Clearly, Blair has a big reputation here. And Merrily reminds her in the midst of all of this, quote, cats are like people. They can sense when they're not wanted. Wow. That is Kirkland's cat wisdom, if I've ever heard of it. Blair isn't having any of it. She goes to Daddy and has Merrily fired. And I was like, what? Rude. And the worst part is it was Merrily's birthday, and she thought she was getting a bonus or something. And she goes into the office and comes out to the saddest music, head hung low. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe she got fired. Uh, so sad. sad. Yeah. Yeah, Blair is the worst villain ever. She's yeah. awful. Blair is definitely at Claire, as in Claire St. Clair. There you have it. We should do a one-off podcast ranking the worst Hallmark villains. I love that idea. So listeners, if you've got a villain in one of these and you want to weigh in, hit us up on the socials. We're going to come up with that. I like that idea a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's some good ones. There's yeah. some Blair good ones will be there. on the list. Blair will assuredly be on the list. Well, the cat took a vicious swipe at her, Josh. Barely. Vicious swipe. Trying to play. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Zachary, meantime, is off lifting at the fire hall, and his coworkers are like, ditch Blair, keep the cat. <laughs> I agree, mm -hmm. 100%. Back at the store, Marilee's friend happens to clue in Zachary on what happened the next day when he stops by with Blair obviously getting her fired. And at the fire hall, everyone is like, why aren't you making a run at Merrily? So it's obvious that everyone around these two like the idea of them together. Blair shows up to Zachary's, and she is super cagey about where Ambrose happens to be. He confronts her about Merrily's firing. She says, quote, she doesn't matter. The cat is gone and everything is back to normal. And Zachary has officially had it he dumps her she's big mad and storms off and he is so unbothered that his response to all of this is to go ambrose hey ambrose where are you buddy <laughs> yeah i like it she's like you're you breaking know. up with me i'm a professional model and then she's like i cooked you this meal and he's like i know you didn't cook because i just bought that stove because he's renovating and he hadn't even connected the stove yet and he still he found the boxes of takeout that she bought <laughs> she's the worst she, oh but it's funny she was really trying to pull one over on him and he was way too smart for it so I yeah that's unbothered mm -hmm. jacqueline takes merrily shopping for a new dress and she looks like a million bucks coming out of the dressing room. Jacqueline wants to meet Brown Eyes, this guy, ASAP. And of course, this can't happen. Like, literally, she wants to meet him that day after they buy the dress at the store. And it can't happen, of course, because Marilee hasn't at all sort of arranged the things she needs to on her end. So she has to chitter-chatter her way out of this little pickle with her sister. So she has her sister drop her off at the fire hall and then instead of going into the fire hall, she decides she needs to hoof it down the street. She's going to walk home in these high heels and this fancy dress. She gets honked at. <laughs> I bet she did. Yeah. Which I thought was kind of funny. And then she yeah. happens to run in Ambrose, run into Ambrose down the street from the fire hall. So, of course, now she has to go back to the fire hall and take Ambrose there and obviously go see Zachary now that the cat is involved in all of this. So... She winds up showing up at the fire hall, and the guys are all like, oh, wooga, when they spot her, because she does look like a million dollars. Zachary and Ambrose reunite. He offers to take Marilee to dinner. So she agrees, but only if she picks the place. And if you needed one more reason to like Marilee, she picks a taco truck in town, which apparently is her favorite spot. I absolutely love this. They have a cute date. She gets cold, and he puts, wait for it, his comically large, fire hall jacket over her fancy dress so that's cute yeah yeah it was a slick move but wouldn't that thing weigh nine thousand pounds it looks very heavy <laughs> very heavy very uncomfortable but 
boy, Kimberly really just leaned into this uncomfortable moment and really mm -hmm. sold the garment. Worth it. Right. Yeah. yeah. They stroll around and they talk about their family histories, the defining moments that led to their career choices, and she keeps his coat at the end of the date. Hmm, stay tuned. Next day, he's there waiting for her after she takes her big anatomy test. So she gets out of class after taking this test and he's just there sitting on the quad waiting for her. Take Which is one of those moments that if she wasn't interested in him would be really creepy. Ooh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> that same event, and this happens a lot in these movies, if there was no interest would be call your local authorities versus <laughs> I'm falling in love with you. And there's a fine line and Hallmark walks there. Very, very fine line there. I love that. He takes her for coffee. It's all splendid. Until Marilee's nasty landlord is there at the end of the date, busting her for her illicit cat. But Zachary is there, and she shows, and he shows that he's absolutely Team Marilee and gives the landlord the business about codes and fire regulations. And at this point, I determined that he is just the literal best, and they would make a great couple. So I'm, I'm fully bought in on their relationship as it's developing here. What say you? Oh, yeah. I was definitely rooting for them, but I'm skeptical because, you know, he's not a commitment guy. And she said, I don't have time to date, but we know our Kimberly Susted slash Merrily, and she's going to want a relationship. So, yeah, could be problems. We'll see. Yeah. This commitment phobia is very much the B plot here. He's got to get over that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When the yokels in the firehouse aren't necessarily helping, like half of them. Our team, yes, get married, settle down, it's the best thing ever. And then there's a couple that are like, nah, bro, you got to bro out, play the field, <laughs> like say bro things. <laughs> Very cliche things. Very and it's cliche. Just, he's getting pulled in both directions and he both doesn't know where to go. Yes, yes. So unfortunately, Marilee is still getting evicted because of the illicit cat. So Zachary offers her a stay in his apartment at his fixer upper. Now her cat is named Queenie. His cat is named Ambrose, and they have their meat cute here, which might just be better than the ones for the leads in this particular movie. Not a read necessarily, but I just, you know, like cats. So, did you like the meat cute right. for the cats? <laughs> they're adorable. Yeah. Because I can't, I, I'm not going to be allergic to them because they're on TV. So, it's, it's fine. Right. <laughs> There's a shield, and I think they're adorable. And it was very convenient he had an apartment attached to this fixer-upper. So it's not even, Howard made sure to know he's not moving in with her in the same, like, the same thermostat zone, right? It's a right. separate <laughs> attached apartment on top of the thing he's renovating. Because even in 2014, come on. Presumably. We're not living in Locked sin. door. Yeah. We're not living in sin. Yes. Here. There's room for the yeah. Holy Spirit, as it were. Lots, yes, in this bungalow that he's renovating. Very nice house. Loved yeah. it. Now, to return the gesture and to be kind about it all, she paints his house. Okay. <laughs> I mean, she probably should have cleared the color with him first, though. She was very bold. She she knew the perfect color. This is what you need to do because they talked about it, and luckily he liked it. Yeah. That's a lot of work if you didn't like it. Risky move, merely Risky move. He's officially a smitten kitten himself about it, and Ambrose literally gives him the business about it all. Like, Ambrose is, like, now trying to convince him to go for it, too, in his own special way. Zachary invites Marilee to go peruse tile, which, you know, okay, sounds good. And also to go to a little school visit where he talks about Christmas tree safety this time of year. So we actually get a little bit of a... A montage here that's them installing tile and then they're going for a jog through town and basically doing life together. His co-workers give him a hard time. He's still hesitant about commitment. That's his big hang-up, of course, even as Queenie and Ambrose seem to be falling in love themselves. So it's all kind of lining up. So our two leads go out to buy a Christmas tree. They decorate it. They chat about Christmas traditions. He works She's sentimental, and later, her friend is like, girl, it's happening, while she makes a fresh pot of Folgers. She suggests <laughs> a mistletoe test to see how he kisses her. I gotta know, Jennifer, there are so many instances in these movies where mistletoe plays a key subplot. Have you ever been to a Christmas party, Christmas gathering, or anyone's home at the Christmas season where mistletoe is prominently featured? Because... 
The way Hallmark writes these movies, you would think that there's mistletoe aplenty in every house at the holiday season. In every opening. Yeah, no, I can't say that I have. I mean, plenty of garland. I don't know that I've seen mistletoe prominently featured. And fun fact, my husband and I fell in love and started dating around Christmas, like a Hallmark movie. But we did not have a kiss under the mistletoe. Yet. Yet. There's hope for that this season. Yet. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we've been married almost nine years <laughs> i think we're serious now but i'm just saying you know if there was a time for that to have happened it would have been that first christmas i would think there you go, there you go. but yeah it, it's a plenty it's just ever flowing in the hallmark movies. ever flowing and it flows really heavily in this one because he plants a kiss on her and wouldn't you know it is dot 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 very sweet i thought it was a good little smoocheroo here I thought it was a little steamy, actually. Yeah. But in the aftermath of this kiss, he has a commitment conundrum. And it's oh. very distancy when she invites him to the sister's party. So kind of an oopsie doodle here. Now, Marilee shows up looking like a million dollars to this party because he's like, I'm not going to go with you. I'm not going to do that because he's all distancy, a little cagey. Like well, and he said he had to work, that which was a big fat lie. That he had to work. And really, he had cold feet. Mm-hmm. And cold feet, for sure. Marilee shows up to the party looking like a million dollars, and I'm sorry, what? He's there, too. The way my jaw hit the floor. And I've seen this movie before. It's just been a while. I forgot about this big plot twist. I was like, no, he's not there. I was just very upset. Yeah, I was, too. And she feels all sorts of ways about this. Mainly very teary and she runs from the party just really all in her feels next day because he's with a woman did we say that part i don't yeah, know i said the woman and yeah and woman is like smooching his cheeks in this other business he is next day we see her she's at zachary's house and she's penning a letter and he happens to catch her doing that and she's like i'm leaving i'm gonna go live somewhere else i've got a new job thank you thank you whatever i'm out He's like, yeah, she says, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Ooh. Yeah. Oops. He's like, but what about the cat? <laughs> She's like, we'll do a play date after the holidays in the new year. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, sh- like that's. A- Thanks, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Molly, my cute little seven year old daughter asks, why is she mad? And Lauren, my lovely wife says, because he's being a doofus. <laughs> <laughs> and that sums it up right there. Sums it up perfectly for me. <laughs> yeah. So Zachary's off to the fire hall where he gets a fatherly talking to from his fire chief, who has been sort of his voice of wisdom throughout this entire movie about relationships and commitment and don't you want a family and all this other stuff. Merrily is hugging a pillow meantime and tearfully recounting everything, literally everything with her friend. We get the sense that this conversation has gone on and on and on and on in circle, 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 circles for quite some time. She is not taking Zachary's calls and he's trying to reach her and he leaves a pretty sad voicemail where he's like, hey, just wanted to say Merry Christmas and I miss you and Ambrose misses you. I thought... This is pretty pathetic and sad. Yeah. She snuggles Queenie by the window and looks out at the stars longingly. Okay, there you have it. All right, next day, finally, it's Christmas. And Zachary is decked out as Santa Claus at the fire hall, meeting with the kids at the fire hall, and recounting his sadness a little bit later to Ambrose, who is, you know, very attentive as a cat, very intelligent, and happens to see this little newspaper right next to him. And he starts pawing at this picture. (laughs) On the newspaper, <laughs> which just so happens to remind Zachary where Merrily is going to be on Christmas Day, and it's an animal adoption event there in the town. So, sure enough, he takes off, and he is off to find her and make his heart known to her. Sure enough, sirens wail. We are at the animal adoption event, and Merrily hears these sirens off in the distance. And I've got to wonder, this has to be some sort of fire department policy violation because this is not an actual emergency. And he is <laughs> yeah. with sirens as though it were. <laughs> we'll let it slide for the sake of love, I suppose. But he I guess so. out, he runs over to her. And in what I think is probably one of the better professions of love that I've seen in one of these, he lays it all out there on the line. 
And the thing that I think is really cool here is he recounts all of this in the same way that she had previously told him about how mountain lions fall in love, which apparently the deal is the male stalks the female in her tracks. And then he goes to his highest point. And if she follows him, they're going to be together forever. And so what he does is he stops her in her tracks, lays it all out there. He climbs the back of the fire truck. She follows him up there and they smooch and you better believe it because it's Hallmark and this thing has been going for one hour and 56 minutes at this point. They are destined to most assuredly be together in love forever. Okay, it is time for our Gold or Coal segment where we each bring three gifts to the podcast video. There's more gold. It's the cat's meow. If there's more coal, it's... it's Real. <laughs> and if it's a tie, it's just a meh Merry Christmas. Josh, I'm coming to you first. Well, I just have to give some gold out of the gate for Ambrose and Queenie. Whoever cast these <laughs> pseudo celebrity cats knocked it out of the park <laughs> because these cats were where they needed to be on time. They were giving face, they were giving <laughs> emotion, they were giving advice, they were giving yeah. life advice. It was the cat's meow, gold for the cats in this one for me. <laughs> Spoken as a true cat lover, I would expect nothing less. I am going to give some gold for the chief and how he supported Zach in this movie. And there was this really sweet speech that you alluded to. And it was kind of like, hey, Zach, this is a defining moment when he was encouraging him to go after Mira Lee. And we learned that chief was like zach's house was on fire when he was younger and chief is the one who rescued him from his bedroom and that is the moment that spawned zach to take up this wanting to be a firefighter profession and so he's like this is another defining moment now i would say this is as defining as getting rescued and planning your whole career but finding love is very important and i really like their relationship so gold. That's a good point and i like that they tucked that in kind of at the end you know, that was kind of a little surprise yeah. that we got. That was a great It's element. very sweet. Yeah. I'm going to give more gold. I liked the chemistry between these two leads. I bought it. I thought that it developed nicely. I thought both characters had their quirks. And the quirks that they had actually added a layer of humor that I think this thing really needed so that it kept moving. I really liked them together as a couple. So gold for me. I will give gold. I like that Zach is not the perfect male. And a lot of times in these movies, we do see Mr. Perfect comes into town. He says the right things. He does the right things. He takes them on the dates, woos the girls, and then they fall in love. This was not a straight and narrow path. This definitely had peaks and valleys, and he got cold feet. He lied to her one point. Like it, but you never, it didn't make you stop liking him entirely. He's not a bad person. He's just flawed, like we all are. So um, I really enjoyed that. Gold. Excellent. A little bit of coal for me. This movie did not feel Christmassy at all to me. It happened at the Christmas season, but honestly, this movie could have happened at any time of the year. There was nothing that really hinged at Christmas in terms of the plot. It just sort of felt like it was plopped in at the Christmas season. So we're walking by trees and we're buying a Christmas tree and all that sort of stuff, but they could have been doing anything like it wasn't pivotal to the plot. So a little bit of something that kind of quirked me about this one. So small piece of coal. I could see that. Uh, my last piece will be gold to kind of piggyback on you. I love their chemistry. I love their banter. The grocery store scene is one of my favorite meet cute scenes, probably in any movie. I just think it's, I watched it twice. It's so funny to me and so natural in its awkwardness. And I was here for it. So Gold. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you're right. That is definitely one of the best meet cutes I've ever seen in one of these movies because I think it really does capture the awkwardness that so many of us experience when we have that run in with somebody that we're interested in. It is that sense of like you could almost feel the pit in her stomach kind of doing that thing that it does. Yes. She sort of, I thought, acted it in a way that was so genuine and so believable. I could see where this would be the the movie that would really sort of raise her profile because I think she knocked it out of the park. So mm -hmm. bottom line here, five gold, just one small little piece of coal. So we're going to call it the cat's meow. Final thoughts? 
I like this movie. I've seen it before. I actually liked it better on rewatch than I did the first time. I liked it the first time, but I don't know if maybe I didn't watch it all continuously. Maybe I broke it up. In my mind, they were doing the house renovation stuff too long when I remembered it, and it dragged on in the middle, but it didn't feel that way this time. So much improved in my memory bank here, and I think it's cute. It's a classic. It's been around forever. I did hesitate to watch it for a very long time because the cover is not great. <laughs> but again, don't judge a movie by its cover. And Kimberly Sested really just, she can do no wrong. So what do you want? Absolutely. What about you? This would be a great movie to watch with your family, to watch with kids especially. Okay. Molly, my seven-year-old, loved this one. She laughed throughout, especially at Ambrose. So I think that this would be a great one to watch with the family on a family movie night with popcorn, out of blankets, that kind of thing. A great sort of entry point, if you will, into the genre if you've never watched one of these. So. That's a good point. It's not too heavy, and we don't have, you know, a bunch of... I mean, there are still alluded to, you know, orphans parents parents are gone and all this other stuff but it's light and so it doesn't get in the weeds like a five more minutes kind of thing would yeah so. yeah well that friends is another episode of do you watch what i watch special thanks to nick schwarz as always for our amazing theme song and to all of you for taking the time to listen on your favorite podcast platform or watch us on youtube Hey, if you like our podcast, be sure to review, subscribe, tell a friend, connect with us. We're on Facebook, Instagram. Give us a follow. Give us a comment. We'll respond to you. And we love interacting with fellow Hallmark movie lovers. So reach out to us. You can connect and find everything you need at doyouwatchwhatiwatch.com. Okay. Next up, we've got a special episode coming for you. So you want to stay tuned for that next week. But then we'll get back to our regularly scheduled fun going down the 12 pods of Christmas. Number 10 is what we'll tackle next. And we'll be taking the deep dive on 2021's An Unexpected Christmas. Stars Tyler Hines and Bethany Joy Lenz. Here's the plot summary Emily works at an ad agency and is sent to her ex's hometown before Christmas. She arrives at the train station as her ex is picked up by his family. They mistakenly think Emily stole an item, and we'll have much to discuss. Emily stole an item. Why did they phrase it that? I'm not sure. Yeah, again. Well, we'll have much to discuss. I don't know. Okay, until then. May your days be merry and bright. We will catch you next time.